What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm going to go ahead and answer a question that was sent to me based on a speech I just gave on the rules of repair. Now I told everybody in that rules of repair that one of the things I did was a live stream and during that live stream I found out that I had a thermal compound that was aging in a power control board or a motor control board and that caused the failure. So just to get it clear, I've got several examples here of things very similar to that. And I'll go ahead and show you what I mean about refurbishing some of these boards so that they might last you another five to 10 years. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. All right, everyone. I have here a collection of various boards that are going to have aging problems. And I, I figure let's just go ahead and go through some of them and I'll show you what to look for and probably the ones that are gonna give you the most problems. So uh, when you're talking about aging boards, um, one of the things that I often look for is corrosion, all right? And like this board right here, you see it does have some corrosion on some of the pins, but that is just from fluids. And luckily we can clean that up with some fancy 99% isopropyl alcohol. You can dip it right on there, clean it up with a nylon brush and you'll be good to go. Now in this particular board, a lot of the power management um, and a lot of the switching is done by these components over here. Now these ones are unlike some of these other boards, they're bonded. And bonded means that the tabs of all of these fats over here are actually soldered to the board and depending on the chip, uh, some of your electrical signaling is gonna be going through the tab. So it depends on the chip, but you can see here, they're all bonded and that gives them one huge advantage is that it uses the board as a heat sink. So you can see over here, we have a power regulator and you can see the tab is clearly bonded to the board and that uses the board as one of your heat sinks. And that makes it very easy and low maintenance because all boards do have a, some sort of thermal capacity. So this board here, there's not too much you can do. There's low maintenance on this because there's no thermal compound to worry about. And likely, if you ever do have a problem with any of these semiconductors, you can just desolder them, test them real quick, put a new one back on, but remember to solder the tab. And that means that you probably have to have a hot air station to get that tab nice and hot because that's a lot of surface area and a lot of uh, thermal mass to heat up. <laughs> so you gotta heat the whole thing up if you ever have to change any of these guys out. And that's gonna take a hot air station. So anyway, guys, this is a striker control board for a hospital bed. And it does uh, your power in, uh, that's probably your master on relay. You've got a bunch of monitoring that's over here. Obviously, you got a bunch of option dip switches. Um, your outputs controlled over here by these little Omron uh, relays. And then you have a lot of motor controllers and stuff over here. I do believe this is for the tilt, uh, head up, head down. Um, you know, a bunch of that feature is going to be over here. So you're going to have a bunch of motor drivers. But anyway, that's this board right here. Low maintenance. These boards are actually pretty well made. Let's get into a more common board. So this one right here is going to be a very typical power supply. And this is a power supply for a TV. And it's got a few things to look out for. Uh, so if this is an aging board, one of the things that you should be naturally looking for is a lot of your small filter capacitors, especially on the exit side of a power supply. And over here, these are all your low voltage filters. And the thing to look for is bulging and leaking caps, infamous for it. So if you want to uh, extend the life of this board, they actually sell capacitor kits to change out all the capacitors that are on here, all the electrolytics. Just be mindful and take a photo before you take them out because if you can tell, the polarity is going every which way. So if you ever remove an electrolytic capacitor, take a photo first. That way there you remember the polarity. You don't want to put them on backwards. But anyway, guys, this board also has a pretty big problem. So not only do the filter caps normally go bad, uh, so that's something if you wanna extend the life of your TV, I would change those out, but also 
Notice down here we have uh, we have switches and we have diodes. So the diodes are for your output side. We have switches, and this here is for your main. That's your main transformer, and this would be for your main power switching. Um, these guys right here, they do have a heat sink and there is a thermal compound that goes between your semiconductor and the heat sink. It's very easy to fix these. So let's go ahead and let's try one of them. Huh, heck it. Let's just try two. So if I wanted to extend the life of this board, if my caps are all good, the next thing that I would have to do is come into here and take a look at these guys. Okay, so they're not baked on. I can tell because I can move them away from the heat sink. As they get older and as the, the thermal compound gets really baked in, um, it's gonna be really stuck, okay? So I can just kind of shove this little flat blade on there, get it behind it. Now this particular heat sink is soldered in. So to do this correctly, you would desolder these guys and don't touch the heat sink. So desolder the semiconductors and you can see the thermal compound that's kind of in between them right there. That thermal compound is getting old. And what you can do for those, so I have my, again, 99% isopropyl alcohol. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some on there because why not? And then you can scrub it out. Right, get rid of all that old thermal compound. There you go. Notice how I have them just bent just a couple degrees. See that? Just enough so I can get in there. You can separate them a wee little bit. But mind you, uh, <laughs> you don't want to do that too much. Let's go ahead and put a little bit more on here. Ooh, now I'm going to smell like alcohol. So the problem, and as I mentioned in my speech, is that as these boards get older, that thermal compound dries out and it loses its ability to sink heat away from your, your semiconductors. So what happens is the semiconductor gets so hot that eventually just fails, usually in a short, and then it compounds. So when you have a failed semiconductor, then it often also pops your main fuse for your ACN. But uh, guys, this is one of the things I do. You can dry it out as you wish. And next I have some K5 Pro. And I love using K5 Pro. First off, it has a, uh, it's got a high viscosity. So you can just kind of goob it like this. Now, mind you, I didn't get rid of all the, um, the alcohol that's down in there. But K5 Pro doesn't really <laughs> respond to alcohol too well. Um, so once you get K5 Pro on something, it's kind of a pain to, to get it off, which could be a good thing, right? Okay, so on the back of uh, both of those guys, I've got a reasonable amount of K5 Pro. Now the reason I use K5 Pro is because of its viscosity. If you have a thermal pad, you can use K5 Pro. If you have thermal compound, you can use K5 Pro. It's the like one solution for everything, which makes it really nice because a lot of times you don't have that luxury. Now, when it comes to thermal pads, you have to usually replace the exact same thickness as what was on there. But guys, with K5 Pro, you just clean off your old, put on the K5, just smear it on there to excess. And then when you put your fasteners back in your semiconductors, it will squish out the excess and you are back in business. That quick and that easy. So here we go. And you can see all the excess squish out as I tighten them down. That's good. That's really good. There you go. Now, the other good thing about K5 Pro is that it is not electrically conductive, which is super cool because <laughs> there are some thermal compounds out there which are electrically conductive. And uh, that presents a problem if it gets anywhere you don't want it to go. K5 Pro? Nah, just slap it on there. Okay. So there you go. These two here are properly bedded back down. I cleaned off the excess, which I should have some Q-tips. But anyway, who cares for the moment? So there's one. I would naturally go through the two diodes down here and do those as well. And then uh, this one here has got some alcohol on there. You can see it 
Uh, I'll just use the hot air station, dry that up. These capacitors here look fine. That board is ready to go back in a device and it will service for quite a while longer. The bottom of this board, you can see how it's really shiny, almost looks like it's conformally coated. I don't think it is. I think it's just maybe extra flux and stuff that's still on there from manufacturer. But anyway, that is a board that's technically refurbished and it's ready for more use. Now let's say we change it up because the Achilles heel of almost every single device out there is going to be your switch mode power supply. And I have a series of them here. I don't even know if these ones work or not. I will be doing a whole separate video on testing these guys. Um, but here I've got a Condor. Uh, this is a pretty typical one. These ones here are atypical, um, which means that the heat sinks and stuff are not held down typically. It's, it's kind of a pain in the butt. And maybe I'll, I'll do a whole other video showing you how to remove some of these heat sinks so you can get in and test some, some components. But anyway, here's several others. Now this one's also a good one um, because the components are held on with clips. You see that? So I've got a clip over here. This is for my main switch and these here are your rectifying diodes for your output power. If you ever are confused on what is your input side and what's your output side of a power supply, just remember that the fuses, which are over here, they're wrapped with heat shrink. You see two of them right there. So that is uh, hot and neutral are fused on this particular board. And uh, you have also redundant chokes and stuff like that. So this one here is a serviceable power supply, but I, I selected it out of the group because if you look in there, there is a bunch of schmoo on a lot of components, right? And uh, that schmoo can be a pain in the butt to remove. So it's, it's almost like a bedding compound, but if you use a little bit of heat, just a little, you can usually use a flat blade screwdriver and you can get in there and just chip that stuff right out. You gotta get it to like 150 degrees and then you can just chip it out. It's very easy. But if you don't heat it up, it will probably break your components. Now the reason that they use this stuff is because of vibration. And also it makes it very difficult to, to repair your own components. But over here you can see, like I have a rather large component, this is your bridge rectifier, and you see that they have some of that schmoo up on top of it there. And in doing so, it is bedded to the wall, you see that? So instead of just flopping around on vibration, now it is bedded and it's going to be stable. Now you see that schmoo on usually capacitors, large capacitors, transformers, uh, especially on the bottom sides of transformers. Oh, actually I can see some over here on this transformer. Um, you're gonna see it on wires, like right here on my wires. You see how it keeps uh, the connector from coming loose. So um, that stuff, just be mindful. If you have to remove something, you have to chip stuff out. This is, I'm not going to remove it until I, I do a test on that guy, make sure it's even bad. But let's get to servicing a very typical power supply like the Condor here. All right, so this Condor, they're not that difficult. Um, this is an open frame type design. There are the ones that have the extra shielding on the top. And this one here has nylon fasteners. All right, so you have to be careful when you're putting these back together because obviously with it being a nylon fastener, you cannot torque the heck out of it. It will be fine. Tighten it down so that it's compressing your thermal compound a little bit and you're all right. Here's my line in. So those would, uh, my bridge, my high voltage DC. So this here would be my um, high frequency switch, which then goes to the transformer. And then over here would be my rectifying diodes. And then it goes into my low voltage DC with your power filtering caps. So these guys here, all of them, we are going to have to remove them from the outside chassis. And there's always, uh, on power supplies particularly, there's three areas where you wanna focus if you're going to uh, refurbish them to get them back up and going. So your rectifying diodes, your switches, uh, your FETs, and always remember your bridge. See this guy over here? You gotta get that bridge rectifier. In fact, I had a surgical table, I did a whole video on it, where the bridge rectifier got too hot and it was a Skytron table. The bridge got too hot, shorted internally and the entire wiring harness that went down the chassis, it all melted because of that one component 
got too hot, the thermal compound dried out. So that's why I'm showing you guys today how to redo your power supplies. If you ever want to, if you have a power supply that you're gonna maybe put in a machine that's, that's kind of old, you might wanna go through and do this. Just because, <laughs> just because. Oh, there we go, there's one. Now, you can see I'm putting my thumb on it to keep it from flying forward like this one did. You just wanna break it loose. And this right here is, um, well, let's see, it is, a, yeah, it's definitely dried out. So it's a good thing we're gonna remove this guy anyway. Yeah, let's break all these loose. There we go, there it is, okay. Again, the trick with the finger to keep them from moving too much. I just want to break them loose. Come on, there it is, there it is. Okay. So now that that's there, now we got to remove our fasteners which are holding the whole entire control board, or the power supply board, to the frame. Let's go ahead and take those out. This condor here is a pretty typical power supply that you're gonna see in x-ray machines and ultrasounds. Pretty generic power supply. However, they can be very, very expensive. I mean, some of these power supplies can be several thousand dollars. So maybe it would be mindful to go through and refurbish some of your power supplies before you put them in a machine if it's a used part, because as that thermal compound gets older, you are just going to have more problems. And if you're doing like a warranty, I would definitely do this to a, an older board that I'm warrantying. All right, so I'm going to leave all the wiring, the wiring harnesses connected. I have all the fasteners out. I've got all the pressure fasteners, which are squeezing down on all your semiconductors, squeezing them against the, the heat sink. I got all those removed. Now I think that this guy is ready himself to come on out. Okay. So I've got a metal tab here and probably this metal tab here is going to keep it from coming out. Oh, that's going to be real fun. Come on. Yeah. Okay. There we go. <laughs> now I so here's one of the crazy things about this particular design is they're using a shim. You see this metal over here. This metal is just a shim for spacing. I don't know why. Um, just to space it out and make it nicer and neater. Oh, I got one more. I have my fuse holders here. Okay. There we are. Okay, so I have double the amount of thermal compound to sit here and goof around with. Right here, I have my first one, which is on the one side of that shim. Yeah. So, it's like paper, it's drying out. Oh, you can see that there's a little bit of copper on the inside. But these will get really crispy as they get older. So there's one. There's two. Yeah, these guys are these guys are getting a little toasty. Okay, so here's a way to apply a nice thin layer of thermal compound without too much of a mess. Get a rubber glove. Now I, that peeled off really clean. So I don't need to go through and scrub it with alcohol. I guess you could if you really wanted to. But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a little bit of this K5 Pro on my fingertip, and now I'm gonna rub it into the metal. Because all that you want your thermal compound to do is create an interface between the metal of the heat sink and the metal of the component, which is usually gonna be a uh, semiconductor, but this one here, it's a shim. All right, so you can see it's a thin layer. Oh, can you see it? Yep, there it is. So you can see it's a thin layer, just enough so that when I put that metal tab back down, which you can see it right here, it will 
fit on nice and beautifully. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing this side. Just rub in some K5. There we go. Instead of using goofy tools and stuff to apply thermal compound, I've always found it just to be way more practical to just put some on the end of a glove and rub it in with your fingertip. It gets on nice and smooth and uniform. You see it right there. That one's ready. Now I've got these shims, which are soldered into the board. Oh no, these guys went all out, 120%. So what I'm gonna do on this one, I'm gonna do exactly like I did on the last board. I'm going to, here, let's pull the glove off. Let's go ahead and pull out these thermal pads right here, which are probably useless. There we go. Yeah, definitely a wee bit crispy. Okay. Let's get this one. Oh, this one's coming off in pieces. That's how old it is. All right. Oh, that's miserable. Here we go. All right. Got it out. Now that I've got that back, let's go ahead and switch over to the K5 Pro. Let's put some of that on this tab. Remember, it's not electrically conductive, so we can put it on in excess. That will squish quite, quite well. <laughs> Yuck. All right, so there's that one. And now I've got these two on this side. Now I could desolder components and do it that way. But what a burden that would be just to put on some thermal compounds. So I'm just using a miniature flat blade. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and squish some of these down. Now on this particular board, there are some plastic spacers in here. You see that? So we got to be mindful that those guys stay in when I reassemble it. Let's push that back. Let's bring the chassis over the frame. Let's drop her down. Oh, you know something? Check that. Right here. I'm going to carefully put it on sideways. I didn't put any thermal compound on my bridge rectifier. There we go. All right, guys. Now that I've got my uh, bridge rectifier coated, now I'm going to go through and pull out this large, very dense thermal pad, which is extremely dry. And I don't know, you know, this one, it's probably still conducting heat, but I don't know how well. It, it starts to sound a little crispy. I don't know. I'm not going to chance it. I'd rather just go through and redo the whole thing. Okay, let's see. So it would be right here. Let's lower it down. Excellent. Okay, so now I'm going to put a couple of my fasteners diagonally across the board. That will make sure that there's no skew and that all the lugs line up. Notice I'm not tightening these fasteners down. I'm leaving them a little loose. That way there we can, you know, center the board as I tighten it down. Okay, still not cranking them down. I'm just making sure that all the slack's taken out. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's put the fastener through our bridge over here. It's got nice and fresh thermal compound on it. Let's just see, there it is. Now we just make sure it squishes it up nicely against the wall. All right, there it is. So this one's down. Now we're ready to go ahead and secure some of these other ones. These ones had the nylon. So yay. You just got to be careful. Those nylon sp uh, spacers in there, they're going to booger all around anyway because I took the thermal pads off. Oh well. They don't really serve a function. Okay, let's make sure it's nice and square. 
And just enough. I can take my rag and clean up that extra thermal compound. There we go. So that one is fully seated. Let's go ahead and let's get this guy over here. Kind of a little bit of a balancing act to get this guy down in there. I find it's a wee bit easier to use these uh, needle nose. Now I'll just make sure it's level as I tighten it down. Nice. And I've got good amount of squish on all sides. Those guys right there. And all that I have to do now is finish putting the rest of these fasteners in. And this power supply is refurbished and it's ready to go. Now, this is a perfect opportunity to go through and check all your capacitors and stuff. Um, obviously, I've already done that. This guy looks beautiful. So I'm just going to go ahead and sink these last couple of screws in and it is done. All right, so now I'm going to work my way around the board and make sure that all these fasteners are tight because the last thing that you want is a screw that is loose on a power supply. Well, a metal screw floating around on a power supply, not going to be good. Let's go ahead and do that. I start at the top and I'm working clockwise around the board. There we go. Last one. Check. This power supply is ready for service. Okay, guys. So that is removing these chintzy thermal pads. These ones here are the problems that I've seen on many of these power supplies. And the goal is after about five or six years, you want to get rid of this and go back to something like this, the K5 Pro. It's the stuff that I like to use. But anyway, there's many different components that are going to have some sort of thermal compound. Like this here is a regulated DC power supply. These transistors are bedded. There's some sort of thermal compound on. As it gets older, the caps and that are one of the things that you want to check. Some of these other power supplies just probably won't necessarily be worth it because it's such a pain to get in there and change them out. But if this power supply was very expensive, you know I would probably at least check it and see if it's worth it. But uh, anyway, guys, that is a pretty quick demo on how to take a board and refurbish it and make it serviceable for another five to 10 years. There you go. Change out thermal compound, check your caps, and uh, change them out if there's any irregularities and uh, you're ready to rock and roll for the future. Thanks for watching guys.